Hi, my name is John Beach. Welcome to another episode of John Beach Analyzes Weird Videos on YouTube. Something a bit special for you today. Um, firstly, sorry it's been so long since I made my last video. Um, as usual, you know, I'm a bit of a sporadic uploader. Hopefully we're going to have a little bit more of a consistent strategy to this going forward. Because quite excitingly, I've got a new series. Um, and um, essentially what that series is going to be, is it's going to be me analyzing... Um, episodes of Pingu. Um, Pingu, if you don't know, it's an old claymation um, children's TV show featuring a family of penguins getting up to all sorts of uh, mishaps, uh, calamities, um, dramas, um, slapstick comedy, and other minor discrepancies. Uh, we're going to take a look at um, episode one ever of Pingu, um, and we're going to try and see if we can work out pingu has got a bit of a reputation for being a little bit gobbledygook, a little bit nonsense, a little bit strange, a little bit like mental, do you know what I mean? So we're going to have a look at this episode of Pingu and see if we can work out a little bit about what might be going on and some of the rationale behind some of the characters' uh, motivations. Um, if you do enjoy this Pingu analysis, please drop me a like. You know how it goes. Let's get straight into it. Episode number one, Pingu is introduced. This is all we see here, and we're going to have a little look and see if we can, um, so we can get to get to grips with with what's going on here in, in Pingu's life as we're introduced to him in this first episode. This this isn't the Pingu music that I remember. I remember the other one. No, I can't be bothered, but yeah. It's almost like a hip hop vibe to this one. Whereas before it was a little bit more. Maybe they changed the theme tune. I don't know. Pingu, pingu. Lunchtime in the pin in the or dinner time in the pingu household typically a very conservative affair. Pingu's got his napkin around his neck in case it makes a mess down his. Um, Front, as he's quite prone to doing, um, dad there eating his potatoes, and mum also eating sort of fishy fish and potatoes. In Pingu land, they tend to just eat fish. Um, I don't know where they got the vegetables from, given the fact that they do live in a sort of Arctic wasteland. Um, and yeah, maybe they just maybe there is a shop nearby or something, I'm not really sure. Um, let's have a look at some of the mise en scene here. We've got a big sort of um, clothes uh, hamper here. Pingu sometimes hides in there, I'm pretty, pretty sure, if he's trying to escape his dad or whatever. Some books, probably on, um, you know, um, good penguining, etc. Um, how to go meh, meh, and whatever. And a picture of um, the Arctic wasteland that they live. It's a bit like when people, like the people that I live with, one of them put on the wall a tube map of London on the wall even though we live in London. It's a bit like that. People like to see the thing that they live in on their walls, don't they, sometimes? It's a little bit like that. So the Pingu family are no, really no different here. Um, and let's have a look, see what's going to go on here. I like the way they eat. You know, it's quite satisfying. There's something quite nice about seeing the plasticine sort of you know, plus, like, I remember watching this and always thinking the food looked good. This is no exception. Look at that beautiful cod there on a bed of greens. Some lovely new potatoes um, nestling to one side and a glass of milk. Lovely. So there's no dialogue in Pingu and I think that's to its credit, you know. We're still going to be able to work out exactly what's going on here. And we can tell just from the noises that they're making that the uh, meal is very satisfying to Pingu, uh, the Pingu family. We'll call them the Pingus. They're starving and they're having a really delicious meal here. And that's amplified by the sound effects. So lots to take in there. Pingu tried to put a new potato in his mouth. It fell off. 
he got frustrated, he lost his rag quickly. And then he like squashed his fork on the table and used that to better able to scoop up his new potatoes. Quite bad manners on Pingley's part, really. Um, I'm sure his mum and dad will have something to say about that. I was right. Oh my God, I was right. <laughs> I knew it. The stern luck on his dad's face. He's like, do not fucking... Do not look at me, Pingu. We do not behave like that at the table. Pingu, obviously, is quite rebellious. He does tend to, although he has a, a strict upbringing, his parents are very much a united force, although mum is sometimes a little bit softer on him, um, from what I can remember. But dad, obviously, he's very upset with Pingu's bad manners. He shouldn't eat things that have been on the table, you know. It's a bit like when they drop it on the floor, you know. It's, Pingu should have known better there, really. I'm, I'm on the dad's side here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's legit quite funny oh, no, 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 some... <laughs> <laughs> so the dad is berating Ping for his bad table manners and then inadvertently um, he falls foul of the same offence you know much to Pingu's hysterical delight. We can see clearly the joy on Pingu's face here as his dad makes the same error for which he was being um, um, receives a, a dressing down, didn't he, at the table, you know? And Pingu just thinks that's hilarious. He even slapped his flipper on, on the ear. Uh... Oh, you don't then go a step further, Pingu. What have you done here? You can't push it by blowing bubbles in your milk, you silly boy. Even mum's tutting now. I mean, to be fair, he had that kind of... I can't put a photo going to make the sadding. She's saying, look, right, I know you dropped your new potato on the table. I know you think that's great that dad dropped his as well. And we all have laugh about that, Pingu. But don't push your luck, because you'll be going to bed and you won't be finishing that kipper. I promise you now. So don't blow bubbles in your milk. Rude. That is rude. No one wants to see or hear that at the table, so fucking behave yourself. <laughs> He's now deep throating the kipper right in front of his mum and dad. You can only... This is only going one way. Pingu seems almost adamant. You know, he wants trouble. He's looking for trouble here. And he's going to find it um, in spades. So he's... Oh, He's deep throating a kipper. He's not behaving himself. He's blowing bubbles in his milk. He hasn't eaten his greens. He's broken his fork. He's laughed at his dad, an authority figure, you know. And now he's stripped all the meat off his bone, the meat off the kipper by deep throating it in front of his mum. You can't get much more disrespectful than that. And my pingu should be ashamed of himself really and embarrassed <laughs> he's saying right you've left the table you haven't asked to leave the table this is an episode all about manners and table etiquette he's saying look <laughs> where do you think you're going get back here and finish your fucking greens you there's all this broccoli here you haven't eaten and you've left your deep throated kipper on the table your napkins just left there like that. You haven't finished your milk and you've broken your fork and you laughed at me. So you're fucking really looking for some serious shit here. Get back here and eat your greens. <laughs> Pingu's grumbling here because he he thinks that greens are disgusting. And to be fair, when you're a kid, that's true. You don't want to eat greens. You want to eat Smarties and Pop-Tarts. And you want to deep throat your kipper at the table, you know. You don't want to be fucking eating greens, mate. It's not till you hit my age, you know, in my late 50s, that you begin to appreciate the taste of a good bit of broccoli or a good sprout or a good bit of cabbage. You know, Pingu's not quite there yet, but he should still... Dad's got a good point. Eat your greens or you're not going anywhere. Dad ain't funny kind of this. Bit of a strange move on Dad's part there to feed Pingu his own greens... Um, when Pingu's got his own greens to finish. A bit of an odd one. Maybe Dad doesn't even like his greens. Maybe they're just a bit too mushy, a little bit bland, you know, not seasoned properly. 
Ah! That's feed, trying to feed him more greens when Pingu's obviously got his mouth full. You know, it's chaos at this dinner table, really. It's quite stressful. Come on, this is Oh, fuck. I've never seen anything like that. He just slurped up his greens over straw, and now he's got it all stuck in his cheeks like a fucking hamster, and he's sticking his tongue out. It doesn't bode well for Pingu's digestive system here. <laughs> and as I was correct, I was correct, and I have not seen this episode, but I knew from the way, the aggressive way that Pingu ate those greens with that straw that he was going to be in digestive trouble. And as we see now, that's exactly what's happening. The All of Pingu's hens are coming back to roost. You know, he's deep-throated his kipper, he's, he's at that all-in-one. Now his stomach's going to be in trouble. And he's been sick, I think. He might have just actually not been sick. He might have just held the greens in his mouth. And now he snuck to the toilet to spit them out. But what you would usually do, or what I used to do when I was a kid, if I didn't like something, you sort of get a tissue, wouldn't you? Just sort of do... Yeah, I'm not going to and you just sort of carefully and that's a rule that holds still to this day you know if you put something in your mouth like a bit of bone or something and you're with someone that you don't want to sort of you might be a bit being quite sort of awkward formal company just a little you know and then you just put that to the side and just make sure you get rid of it comfortably you know and safely and discreetly Pingu's done the right thing he wanted to spit his greens out he's gone to the toilet he hasn't been sick he's just spat the greens out he doesn't like them <laughs> He's waving bye bye to the greens. Bye bye greens. Now give me my smarties and my pop tart. <laughs> Pingu's making faces at himself in the mirror there. You know, he's clearly got a lot of disrespect, not only for his parents, but for himself. You know, we don't tend to make faces. He's, he's mocking himself here, and he's only got himself to blame. He's got himself in this position. You know, what should have been a pleasant dinner. Kipper, new potatoes, greens has now turned into um, quite a stressful situation because of Pingu's behaviour and he's taking it out on himself as well. I cannot be the Pingu seems to be dry humping the floor in this next scene. He's now suffering from an energy boost um, by eating his food too quickly and he's gone uh, delirious. He's um, completely out of control um, and we'll see what happens but this is obviously due to overeating, eating too quickly, um, all this sort of sh the sugar from his carbohydrates, from his new potatoes, all gone to his brain and the only thing he can think to do is dry hump the floor. <laughs> And then roll into the uh, cloves hamper like a ball. <laughs> He's really lost the plot here. He really has lost the plot. Mum and Dad looking on in almost dumbfounded silence. They don't know what to do with him. They don't know how to react to this. He's never done this before. He's never... Remember, our cameras have just come here. Just You know, this is the first time we're meeting the Pingus. What does he want with this boat? Let's see if he if he's going to play with it sensibly. I might allow it, but something tells me he's got, he's got more mischief up his sleeve here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mum's tucking into a bit of a magnum. Um, oh no, Solero. Obviously, in the Arctic wasteland where the pingus live, Soleros grow on trees. That's where Soleros come from. They come from the Arctic. Fresh, you can get pick sort of, you know, Soleros when they're much younger. They get picked from, taken away from their mummy and daddies. And they, they get transported to the Arctic wasteland. That's where, what penguins eat them. Solero in Arctic means young penguin penguin food food of the young penguin so penguin food le ro young young penguin food 
That's a bit gross. Mum's really lit that and Pingu's licking it now. Can't abide by that. I can't abide any sort of bodily fluid swapping, but mum, obviously, when it's your kid, it's different. But that's a little bit gross. A bit disappointed with mum there. She should say, no, go and get your own. <laughs> He's taking liberties there. He's had that whole Solero to himself. Mum was only saying, look, have a lick, you know, by all means. And that's not even ideal because I don't want your spit all over my Solero, but, and he's taking liberties again. He's eating so much. <laughs> and he still wanted more there. He still wanted more, believe it or not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> An unpumped up ball, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so Pingu's having his nose blown there. All very fairly, you know, he's misbehaved himself at dinner, but, you know, now he's allowed to go out and play with his friends, uh, a little bit of football. Um, but before you do that, obviously, it's very cold in the Arctic way, saying you've got to have your nose blown. That makes perfect sense. Or your beak, you know. Penguins get, you know, snotty noses too. He's got to have his nose blown before he goes out to play football. Perfect sense. Everything's fine. <laughs> They've nicked his ball. They might not be his friends. I assume they're his friends, but they've stolen his ball. They haven't actually asked him if they can have that. They just was like, there's a ball there, we'll have that. It's Pingu. He's not, what's he going to do? He's fucking, he's mental. He, you know, he goes mat mat and he waves goodbye at food that he's flushed down the toilet. You know, we'll just steal his ball. Mat mat mat. The iconic Pingu um, call. Uh, mat mat means it just means it's an expression of emotion it can be extreme it can mean a number of different things we can unpack that the more we go into um, this analysis <laughs> his friends are now hiding from Pingu so a lot of Pingu's behaviour can be explained um, his friends are obviously He's obviously on the receiving end of a lot of... He's the butt of a lot of his friends' jokes. We're starting to see a bit of a friendship dynamic where Pingu sort of rules the roost in the house in terms of his behaviour. He gets away with quite a lot, as we've seen at the dinner. It was a very stressful dinner. Um, a lot of that can be explained by his friends' behaviour towards him. Pingu very much at the bottom of the social hierarchy here. His friends hiding from him. They've stolen his ball. They're mugging him off. Make no mistake about it. And that the effect that that will have on Pingu at that age will be immeasurable. No wonder he has such little respect for himself. <laughs> Clever tactic. You know, if you get him around the other side and then we sneak around the other side and then we run off with the ball. We'll play penalty. <laughs> forced to look on in envy as his friends play keepy uppy um, and not doing a too bad job of it I'm guessing that they're probably a little bit more physically able than Pingu seems to have um, quite good skills on the ball head in you know Pingu only able really to look on here in envy as his friends play with his football that his dad pumped up for him you know and it was his idea to play football his friends have now interfered Pingu, very much on the sidelines, forced to watch as his friends enjoy themselves with his football. It's not good. <laughs> so, Mac <laughs> Mac, we get a Mac Mac there, and that Mac Mac is a direct response here. We are being, we are seeing Pingu provoked. He is being uh, shown up in terms of skill by this taller, better-looking penguin. 
you know, Pingu's not exactly an oil painting, is he? This guy's turned up. He can head the ball 50 times and walk around while he's doing it with Pingu's ball. Very much a show of disrespect. He's got no respect for Pingu's time, no respect for Pingu's ball, no respect for Pingu's uh, well-being, his mental health. The only thing Pingu is obliged to do is to give his friend um, an aggressive map map here. And that's what happens. He got it back. But again, these penguins are obviously very, very skillful footballers. Um, saw lots of pretty, I mean, accomplished moves there from this other little penguin. He's got a big beak, so he might be sort of quite annoying. He's about Pingu's height. Um, but due to his skills, he rises above the social hierarchy a little bit more than Pingu. Pingu probably just wanted to roll the ball around and sort of fart on it or whatever. Whereas these two obviously take their football very seriously. Pingu just wants to have a good time, but they want to show him up. Social conflict is very much hard this episode. <laughs> Pounding Pingu like a basketball. So we see physical violence. The first... <sighs> Physical piece of physical violence ever seen in a Pingo episode. Pingu's friend bouncing him like a basketball and squashing him into the floor and patting him on the head uh, while making noises at him. Um, so Pingu bullied. He's a victim here. <laughs> Tripping him up and stealing his ball. So we can see why this. <laughs> it's no coincidence that Pingu, you know, deep throats his kipper and spits his greens out into the toilet and waves at them when he flushes them, makes faces at himself in the mirror, um, rolls into the dressing hamper, you know, humps the floor, laughs at his own father in the face of authority. Is it any wonder when he gets treatment like this? <laughs> One common way of um, mugging someone off in the Arctic wasteland where the Pingus live is to throw snowballs. Um, it's a very common way of berating someone and mugging them off <clears throat> because in the Pingu, where the Pingus live, snow is basically the only thing that there is. Kippers and balls. Um, pingus it's basically it so if you want to mug someone off other than tripping them up squashing them like a basketball and going mat mat at them throw some snow often a last resort sometimes a first resort but snow always a good way to get on someone's bad side right on the butt right on Pingu's butt look at his face look at Pingu's face here he's just been hit on the butt with the snowball God only knows how that must feel. I had snowballs thrown at me by Rue Boys. Actually, there's quite a funny story attached to that. I was walking into the shop when it snowed really heavily one year where I used to live in Kent. And outside the co-op, I went down to get some cigarettes. And outside the co-op, some Rue Boys were there. And they threw snow at me. And I threw one back. I was a little bit larier in those days. I threw a snowball back. And it hit one of the Rue Boys. <coughs> on his hoodie so he went to get another snowball and really sort of pelt one at me from over the road and as he went to throw the snowball he slipped on the ice and fell on his ass. it's quite delicious I've got to say so Pingu's given up here he's like I'm not, how am I going to fucking practice football out there with those two fucking dickheads throwing snow at me tripping me up I'm going mat mat I might as well just go back home to my mum and dad Snitching, I think. Snitching. Or he may just be saying, you know, we don't know. We don't speak Pinguese. We just, all we can say is Pingu's not happy. He's told his parents that his ball's flattened and he can't play outside anymore. Maybe the dad will pump it back up for him. No, he doesn't want to play football. He wants to cuddle. He wants cuddles with his mummy. That's basically what he wants. And really, it's what he needs at this point. It's been a long, it's been a long evening. <laughs> oh, he is snitching. They, he's telling them that look, you know, things got out of hand. 
I'm the first to admit, Mum, you know, I went outside with the best of intentions. There were two lads. They stole my ball. They mugged me off. They made me go around the igloo, you know, and they bounced me like a basketball. And it really hurt, Mum. Uh, and I know I've been a little shit. And I know I've spat my greens out. And I know I blew bubbles in my milk. And I went, Matt, Matt. But, Mum, what I really need now is some TLC. So why don't you wrap your wings around me and, you know, Give me some support. Give me the love and support that I need at this age, you know. <laughs> Mum, they're happy to oblige, and the dad gets to work repairing the football. Got it really That's it. Which he manages quite quickly with a simple plaster. <laughs> and Pingu um, also getting the same plaster on his head. So an interesting kind of... Um, Interesting piece of symbolism there. To his friends, Pingu's nothing more than a plaything, nothing more than a ball. We see the same plaster on Pingu's head as we do on the ball. Pingu is nothing more than a plaything to his friends. Um, he's lucky, really, to have such caring parents because he's been a little shit. <laughs> the ball's perfectly fine. Pingu gets into his hammock. Mum strikes his head, and Pingu goes cross-eyed. <laughs> With pleasure, almost. He's that feels so good, you know, when you sort of go a bit, your eyes go a bit weird, when you're in absolute throes of ecstasy and pleasure. <laughs> so a big Matt Matt there again. Thanks, Dad. That is fucking amazing. You fi fix my ball, Mum. You put a plaster on my head. How can I ever forgive you guys? For how can I ever? How can I ever repay you guys? <laughs> <laughs> and that's episode one of Pingu. <coughs> Bloody hell. <coughs> There's more where that came from if you enjoyed it. Um, we'll get right back into this next week or the next episode with Pingu helps with incubating. So we'll see what that's all about. If you enjoyed, drop a like. Give me a comment let me know what's up um the first pingu analysis video hope you enjoyed see you later oh, oh, oh.